All right, Coach Malave, welcome to the Gohio Cast podcast. I mean, we're we're in our infancy here in the Gohio Cast podcast, but uh, we uh, we're much more limber with Gohio Cast podcast as opposed to I'm looking at the Barbarian Hour flag. But Coach Malave, you are the head coach of Case Western Reserve. What year is this for you? Uh, so it's year two. Um, so in the middle of year two right now. And you came from. Mount Union, where you were the head coach for, I want to say, four or five years? Yep, five years. Yeah, took over in 16, wrapped up in 21, and um, then took over at Case in the spring of 21. Did both James brothers win the NCAA title for you? Yep. Yep, okay. so Gerard, uh, Gerard won the national championship for me in 2018, and then Jordan won in 2019. Was 2018 in Cleveland? I want to say 2018 was in Cleveland. Am I wrong? Yep, it was in Cleveland. Yeah, and actually, it was uh, Gerard's birthday was actually uh, Friday of the championship, so it was really fun. Uh, we had we had a great time celebrating too um, after <laughs> after it was all said and done. Nice. And so he's from actually Bedford. Yep, Bedford. Yep. Yeah, he's from Bedford, and uh, his brother Jordan also Bedford. They're both state placers at Bedford, correct? No. So, uh, so, so Gerard, I believe was, was fifth. Um, the, I know he, he made, uh, the national, uh, high school, uh, grade level nationals finals. So it took second grade level finals before he went to Kent. And then, uh, but I, I believe he was, was fifth and, and maybe, maybe seventh, but Jordan, Jordan actually never placed. He was a one-time qualifier. And then uh, he uh, actually missed out on, on at least one championship because of an illegal slam. So Jordan James never placed in the Division One state tournament. Nope. That that blows my mind. He he was when when I met him. So he was also coached by another Mount grad, that guy that wrestled at Waynedale High School. Um, his name was Chris Hirschberger. When I met. Jordan um he just the athleticism the chain wrestling his vision it, it was insane um you know I mean obviously Gerard was a great wrestler but he he you know was wrestling in division one room came down you know there was a lot of you know things that he he picked up was a college vet at, at that point you know yeah. Jordan Jordan just completely different um he, he's hands down you know, one of the best kids I've ever seen um, not place. That's wild. And then he won – he was a two-time champ, wasn't he? he? He just won the second time, yep. Yeah, he won. Now he's on uh, Coach Riggs' coaching staff there at Mount Union, correct? Yep. Did you have input at all for the hiring of of, uh, of Ryan Riggs? Yeah, so we actually left um, – like for me, they asked me to leave a like a rating – um, and so I actually left them some candidates and talked with Ryan on the phone and um, about the position. And so, you know, I, I left them essentially five names um, of people that I think that they should reach out to. And, um, and and he was certainly, you know, one of the people I thought that they should talk to. So, you know, really happy for him and, you know, great hire and, and really happy, you know, because I, I love Mal. Um, you know, that that's my alma mater. And, you know, so I want to see them do well. Um so, you know, he's doing a fantastic job there. So you were at Mount. I remember covering matches, and you guys had a crazy match with John Carroll. Were you in that dual meet that I covered and put on Flow Wrestling? Oh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Zeb. Um, so, like, growing up in wrestling, you know, I mean, we – we I don't know how to – I guess the, the correct way to put it is, I mean, we grew up with your content. You know, I mean, that was, you know – I was a part of the era that if you wanted to see people wrestle, you, you found Zeb's content. <laughs> so that was, yeah. so, you know, I, you know, I, I've obviously seen you, you know, at events and, and things like that, but um, you know, I remember you coming down to mound and you covered our, like one of our Halloween, you know, workouts. And, you know, I, I remember, uh, I went know, to the haunted house. Yeah. Uh, the factory, uh, 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 factory of terror. What's it, Fact, yeah, yeah. Factory of terror. And, you know, and uh, yeah, with Coach Eslich, and oh, um, you know, you you were actually at at the duel at Carroll, and and that was, I believe, twenty. It was a twenty to nineteen or twenty to eighteen duel. Barber. Uh, 
Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, they, they were actually pretty loaded at that time. I mean, they, that was a, a real good group. Um, and then, you know, we, we went on a run against them for a couple of years. Um, but they, yeah, I mean, you were, you were the backdrop of, of pretty much all that film, you that know, that fun. came out. That was fun. And you guys had that, that listen, that's the problem with, um, Flow Wrestling leaves over half the market on the table for somebody else, but there's no competition for them. They bought the only competition in um, uh, track. what do you track? They bought track, so there's really no competition unless you know Mark Neem and myself. Uh, uh, Rob Gore's awesome, but it's like we're just like independent guys. Whereas they're a massive media company with hundreds of employees. I think it's strategically for them a huge error to just completely ignore D2 and D3 like they've done for over a decade. I know they're starting to put a little more of the content on there and they kind of got some D2 and D3 people now. Yeah. But I think that that was just such a, uh, it was cool. Cause Martin Floriani, you know, the guy, the founder of Flo wrestling, he was like, yeah, absolutely. Put D3 wrestling on there. Where some of their guys were like, they could, you weren't gum on the bottom of their shoe. And I, I just disagree with that. Right. You know, I just, yeah. dis- I think that's wrong. I think wrestling's wrestling. And I'm just a fan in general of the sport of wrestling. And I think D2, D3 guys, NAIA guys, they wrestle hard, man. They wrestle oh, hard. Man. It's fun to watch. And you're, you're, it's a more realistic level of wrestling for average, regular people, where it's like a lot of these D1 guys, man, they're borderline superhumans. Mm-hmm. They're freaks. They're yeah. freaks. I like the kid who's a state qualifier, maybe never placed. And goes and is an all American. So you went to Lutheran West High School, correct? Yep. Um, what was your best state tournament finish? Did you qualify? What was your best in high school? Yeah. So, yeah, so my best finish was third um as a senior. Um, and so that was I, I think in twenty or two thousand and eight. Um, and so that was my best finish, but I, I didn't place outside of, of that, but that was my best run. Was that D two or D three? Uh we were division three. Division three, okay. So you were right in the like Monroeville guys when they were just starting yep. and they were just coming in as freshmen and sophomores. You were, uh, that yep. was your wheelhouse, right? Yep. So they were, you know, I think at the time, you know, Logan might was probably a, a uh, he, he might've been a sophomore at that point in time, but I think Hunter was maybe a three. Logan was a 12 Tassari was maybe a 19 um and then phillips i think was always a 71 71 yeah, were, always 71 yeah, you know but yeah they were right there who won your weight when you were third uh so i i wrestled ryan gamble in the semifinals so that was um that was the loss that put me on on the backside um and so he won it but he was a three-time champ from miami east yeah he was pretty good did ryan gamble go to northern illinois or something like that is that right purdue Purdue. Okay. Yeah. So he's a big time guy out of the gate. I mean, it, it, okay. So I talked to, um, I know, don't know if you've seen uh, Coach Haywald's interview. Um, I don't know if you get the Haywald jokes um, because you've taken the last two jobs that he's left, right? Yeah. Right. I, I don't know if the, the Case Western, you replaced Coach Song, right? Yep. Okay. And, he, and Coach Song replaced Mark. But yeah. so there's, there's some gap in between there. But, he was at Mount when then he Shin, left. Then Shindell. Shindell yep. went to Adrian. Yeah. Well, Shindell was your teammate. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. That's why well, he's one. Of, he's one of my. He's one of my best friends. Yeah. Really good guy. Yep. Really good guy. Bill Shindell's a good dude. He go to Hoban. He did. He, he did. went to Hoban. You went to Lutheran West, and then Justin Toth was your teammate for a year as well. Um. Justin, Justin Toth. With the one leg, the dude with one leg. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, who's, who's the coach at Riverside. Yeah, yeah he was. Because I, I teach with him yeah. at Riverside. And, the, and then he and then he went to uh, Lake Erie. Yeah, he's yeah. he's another another great guy. Really good guy. Did you know that Riverside's only a mile from Lake Erie College? I, I no, I mean, I, I've only been to Lake Erie College actually twice. Um, and that was just to connect with Boomer for a little okay. bit. Um, gotcha. So, but, that's that's my my first two times out there. We're a mile apart. It's wild. Yeah, it's wild because you're East Side now, being Case Western Reserve. Yeah, um, you're East Cleveland. 
Actually, you guys are right on the border of East Cleveland and Cleveland proper, correct? Correct. Yep. We're, you know, we're still considered Cleveland, but yeah, we, I think East, East uh, 118th um, is, is that crossover. East right Cleveland there. Shaw. Yep. Shaw is probably not five minutes off your campus. Yeah. But yeah. We, we definitely border East Cleveland. Um, is that right down Euclid? Yeah. Right down Euclid. And then you guys hosted the 20, one of the 2020 presidential uh, debates at Case Western Reserve, correct? Yep. Yeah, I believe it was the Democratic debate. Yeah. No, no, no. I believe it was, I believe it was a presidential oh, oh, debate. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. Um, it was the president. It was Trump versus yeah. Biden, dude. Yeah, yeah. That How was, wild is that? That was on your campus. Well, I, I actually wasn't, um, I wasn't hired at that time. I was still at Mount when they were going through that election. Um, oh but I, but I do, I do know, I do know what you're talking about now. Yeah. So that was when they were going through that cycle. Um, I, I do remember, you know, the, the back and forth. And I don't think, I don't think they were able, um, you know, just kind of a little bit of aftermath from that. I, I, you know, some of the guys on the team, I remember them talking about how, I don't, I don't think anybody was allowed to even use the facilities when they were the going secret service that. comes in. I want to say, they, they Within shut it all five down. days and then they're investigating they're probably yeah. doing the duck work everything i mean it's not it is that thorough everything. of a thing yeah. for the president obviously trump was the president at the time right um but it's like wild to think what the secret services job is and it was right yeah. on your campus see what's crazy about case western reserve i mean this is if this i don't even need this to be a recruiting pitch i'm outside looking in i'm i'm a kent stater right um you guys have a three team you have three teams, three schools that are considered to be like your equals, right? Academically and athletically, culture-wise, University of Chicago, NYU, and you guys, correct? Yeah. That's like a three-team league or something, or am I making that up? Yep, yep. So the UAA, um, and so there are there are five other schools within that conference, but they just don't offer the sport of wrestling. So Brandeis in Boston, Emory in Atlanta, um, Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, they would probably be – if they had wrestling, Carnegie Mellon would probably be the best uh, wrestling program in that league, um, just with their location in Western PA. Um, and then Rochester, for, for whatever reason, which is kind of crazy, because St. John Fisher, um, which is also in Rochester, has wrestling, and then RIT has wrestling. So, you know, for Rochester not to have wrestling is is a little wild. To That's me, bizarre. In, in, in New York. Um, you know, but those would be, you know, in terms of if you're looking for a tier one, you know, research based institution, um, you know, it, it's pretty much us, you know, of course you can throw in, you know, Johns Hopkins. Um, and then there's some of the NESCAC, you know, the new England small colleges that are very good, uh, Williams, Wesleyan, uh, Trinity. So there's, there's a handful of new England colleges that, you know, but they, um, Washington and Lee is another real, real solid program academically, um, but they're just different types of schools. They're more liberal arts based schools were, you know, a little more research oriented. So you look at it, like, I know Keith from Johns Hopkins, a Kent State uh, alum. I know that. Yep. Keith, Keith is a Kent Stater, um, Baltimore. So that's crazy. I didn't even think about that Baltimore. So like if we're naming the schools that are most like Case Western Reserve, NYU, schools with wrestling. Yep. NYU, University Chicago. of Chicago, where they, with Robert Oppenheimer split the atom. Yep. Um, below the football field. <laughs> and then um, Case Western Reserve, like they cluster you three together because you're in the same league, but you're the only three within the league that have wrestling, individual yep. three. Okay. And then Johns Hopkins, that's another one when you're able to throw that at people, they're, oh, that those are like, major prestigious academic institutions throughout the United States who have Ivy league type, they drive, they draw Ivy league type eyeballs Dude. and interest. Yep. I, yep. I, that's not a stretch. What I'm saying is actually like a thing. Yep. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, to be quite honest with you um, to on the recruiting trail, when I talk with kids and they, they're highlighting for me, their list of schools, um, it, it can be, it can be a little overwhelming at times when you're, when you're trying to like evaluate, you know, okay, how, how can I leverage, you know, our school and, and a lot of these kids and their parents do their research and, you know, you have to know the ins and outs of, you know, your programs, because, 
you know, sure, they're going to talk with admissions reps and, and our admissions team does a great job. But if you don't know what you're talking about, they're going to find out real quickly. And, uh, you know, and some of these coaches are, are real good at using because there's different application types. So there's a lot of there, there's some it, it, there's a little difference in strategy, too, in, in how you recruit a kid to this type of institution at Mount Union, for instance, we had rolling admissions. So recruiting really never stopped and, and you really never stopped recruiting a class ever until that group graduated because you could always add from transfer portal or you could add for a variety of different reasons where, you know, you have early decision application, which is actually a binding contractual application. You have early action, you have, um, you know, PPSP, which is a pre-professional program type application, which can segue people into, you know, graduate school right from the jump. So there's, there's different types of applications that, um, you know, in, in year one, I was a little naive to it. I thought, oh, you know, just apply, you know, just say hey, that's, and then, okay, now, now you start to figure out the game of, you know, how people approach the application process, how quickly you have to get to kids. Um, you know, it's not, hey, we're going to talk to you as a senior. We're going to talk to them towards the end of their sophomore year and, and really start, start to push things out into their junior year. Um, it, so, yeah, sorry. You know, that that's what I would it's it's pretty competitive um you know a, a lot different than i thought initially okay first off this show's about you if you take the ball and run with it i want you to take the ball and run with it because this is the show <laughs> yeah. about you coach malavi it's not yeah. about me i talk a whole bunch enough uh people get to hear my like ludicrous <laughs> takes all the time so it's like we want to have you that, that's like honestly don't don't apply you do you man yeah. i want you to like that's I think that's a great explanation because here's the thing that I found when students who that I know where I'm at Riverside, they'll be like, hey, I got into case. Well, then my immediate follow up is and I'm like, how many Ivies did you get? into?" Right. That's normally the, the route that I go with that is well, how many Ivies did you get into? Yeah. And normally there's at least one or two Ivies that they get into, whether it's Cornell or Brown. Yeah. Or, yeah. It does, doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's the Ivy. There's eight of them. If yeah. you can get into one of them, you can usually get into all of them, or you had a chance to get into all of them. Right. Um, you guys are similar to them in that it's NCAA Division Three. There's no athletic scholarships given. Now, knowing the type of student that you draw at Case, you're not throwing darts at a dartboard. This is not like the targeting that you have of kids. It's a pretty limited target of who you can actually go after for admission. It's, it's, it's similar to what the Ivies can do. Like you have right. to target kids pretty early on and they got to know, Hey, I can get in because it's, because it's wasting your time and their time if they can't get in. Yep. Well, so our, so our admissions department is actually pretty fantastic with us. We can screen kids with our admissions department. So they can tell us pretty early on in the process if that kid is recruitable or not. So we can, we can really, now of, course, now, of course, from my end, you know, I've, I've gotten better learned, you know, I, I keep samples, like I keep a spreadsheet of, of, you know, who's getting in, who's not getting in. Um, and so I try to find, you know, common threads and common data or, you know, different things that could be potential landmines or red flags. But, um, you know, our, our admissions department does a great job. So, you know, for instance, you know, right away, when, when you find a kid like Calvin Rowan, you know, from, you know, Perry High School, you know, and, and they say, hey, green light you know, this is a kid that's recruitable, you know, we, we really push a lot of effort into, you know, getting him in because, you know, we're not going to talk to, um, you know, 10 additional kids. We, we want to convert Calvin, a kid like Calvin that comes from a great family, great student, um, you know, of course, a great wrestler, um, you know, same thing with some of the kids that we found out of state uh, that are super talented. It, it just helps, you know, really, identify where to spend your time, you know, in that process. So there, there really isn't a reason, you know, similarly to, you know, Stanford, Cornell, um, you know, Brown's on, on the up and up now with, with their most recent hire, um, you know, they're, you know, UC is very good. NYU is very good. There's really no reason for case wrestling not to be very good. Um, and if you actually look at sports like that are similar to us, swimming, tennis, you know, we, we have one of the top tennis programs um, in the nation. They, they finished national runner-ups, I, I believe twice. They won indoor um, twice. You know, we have very competitive track program. Um, you know, our soccer teams and the women's soccer teams in the final four, you know, men's soccer team made the national tournament. I know that's wow. kind of deviating from the individual, 
you know, team sports, but football super competitive. So what, what got me excited about taking the job was, you know, that ability to, you know, isolate on the recruiting trail where at, at Mount, um, you know, you, you'd basically have to start out with this massive funnel every year and, and you just kind of have to work down, you know, the list because, you know, it, it, that's just the nature of it. And, and, uh, you know, it, it sometimes could be hard to, to build relationships because you had to make sure you had enough kids that were recruitable and also equally interested in your school to even convert mathematically. So, you know, at, at case, you know, it, you'll hold kids a little longer in the recruiting process because of how good the school is. Um, and you can find out pretty quickly how serious they are, you know, about, you know, that, that type of education. So, um, but our admissions department does a fantastic job of, of letting us know, you know, Hey, this is, this kid is, is green light, go get them. And, and you mentioned scholarships. A lot of people, they, they look at the sticker price of case and they say like, absolutely no way. How sticker could you, shock. Sticker yeah, shock hundred percent. Yeah. For 400 grand, you know, for your education and, you know, and people can, can, you know, manipulate the, the, you know, return on investment and, and stuff like that all they want. But what, what I don't think people realize is, you know, that we actually scholarship academically, um, you know, where most schools like us don't. So that is a huge leveraging point for us where, you know, you mentioned, you know, hey, a kid might get into a Dartmouth or they might get into a Cornell or, you know, one of those schools. Well, unless they hit one of those, their, you know, their scholarships or once they, if they're one of their grants or if they fall into one of the programs where, you know, they're going to make sure they don't have any student loan debt, which has just re recently become a thing at some of the Ivy League schools. Well, that's, um, it's okay. So know, it's need-based. It's need-based. What they do is it's FAFSA. It's what mom and dad make. Yep. And it's yep. need-based. Yep. And their goal is they, they take that, they calculate it, and then they spit this number out at you. Mom yep. and dad are – dad's a trash collector. Mom's a librarian. Mom and dad make 110 grand a year. I don't think on that figure right there, you're they're not paying to go to any of the Ivy Leagues. If mom and dad make, let's just that's just a dummy number of two dummy yep. jobs. I said they're not paying to go to the Ivy League. No, no, exactly. Especially, especially now with some of the programs that they've had, and so it's forced our school, um, you know, to restructure their endowment and restructure scholarships to make sure that we're competitive because otherwise you're not going to get the kids. Um, you know, so, you know, when I mentioned the pre-read process, we've had kids that have committed to us early in the process because our admissions department says not only are you getting in and not only are we going to meet your financial need, but in addition to that, we're going to give you, you know, twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars in merit every single year um, for, you know, academically. And that usually it, you know, that's a substantial chunk, but in addition to what they're receiving off their EFC and with FAFSA, it, it could be a game changer. And in some cases make us more competitive than some of the schools you might think, you know, would, would be cheaper. So when you say someone like Calvin Rowan, is Calvin Rowan currently yeah. on the team? Yep. So Calvin Rowan, that's the, okay. So he's like the classic example of a person I think of. What'll happen is Calvin Rowan's dad was he was one of the first division one all Americans Edinburgh's history, Dave Rowan. Yep. Um and from Madison. Now he's a teacher at Perry High School where Calvin Russell, he was Calvin's head coach, one of the best yep. guys you'll ever meet. Yep. Dave Rowan, great people. Um, and then Kyle is at Stanford. The yep. battle you guys are fighting that I talked to uh Haywald about, I'll talk to Coach Gibbs about. Hopefully we can get Coach Mason on. Um uh, you know, all those, I want to get all the coaches. On. I want to get BW. I want everybody Gibbs Riggs, all of them. I want all those guys on. I want them to talk. Cause I, you know, I'm an Ohio Homer. Right. But the thing that, that, um, that Haywald said is the Iowa colleges, the D three, Iowa's Augsburg's and the, uh, oh, Augsburg's obviously in Minneapolis, St. Paul area, but Wartburg, uh, co, uh, Morris, Morris. Yeah. Luther. Yep. Yeah. Simpson. They do a really good job of getting two and three time state champs from Iowa, from Nebraska, yeah. from Minnesota to go to those schools. They well, get D1 caliber guys who aren't afraid because well, everybody, right. ah, D3, I don't want to go D3. But what, what, with Rowan, though, his brother's yeah. at Stanford, brother's a state yeah. champ. How right. do you get that guy not to big time you? 
How do you get that guy whose dad's a D1 All-American, his brother's at Stanford? How do you fight that? That's a that's a hard battle to fight, and we talked yeah. a lot about it. How do you fight that battle? Yeah, well, so, the you know, I guess first to answer your question, it, it's just relationships, right? So, you know, identifying the kid, building the relationship, building relationship with the family, you know, and then uh, that obviously goes a long way, um, you know, and figuring out, you know, what Calvin's looking for in an experience. And that's going to be different than, than Kyle, right. You know, in terms of, um, you know, just because the kids, the older brothers at D1 doesn't mean that that's exactly what Calvin, you know, was looking for. Um, I certainly think, and especially after seeing him in the room, he could certainly do it. Um, you know, he's, he's just been out of this world, um, for us. And, and he's just going to be a foundational piece for us building these next couple of years, but to, to your initial, you know, thought, and, and one of the things that you said Mark brought up, I think people first need to understand that the market in Ohio is so drastically different than the market in Iowa and Minnesota and Wisconsin. And what I mean by that is, number one, in Wisconsin, your state schools like, you know, Kent State, Tusk, those are division three schools that offer. So, you know, like a Wisconsin lacrosse or Wisconsin Platteville. They, they have, you know, 12, 15, 20,000 20, students there. They are, you know, they have state budgets, which in some cases could be tight, but I mean, that very different competitive market. Um, and then also they don't have a lot of division two teams. They don't have a lot of NAIA teams. They don't have a lot of, you know, JUCO teams. You move over to Iowa, they, they might, they have a JUCO circuit in Iowa, but outside of, upper Iowa. And it, I mean, what's the other, what's the division two market in, in Iowa, you move over to Minnesota, it's the same thing. So I, I think, you know, in Ohio, what we run into is, you know, we have, at, you know, at least four division ones. And then of course we have a bunch of people that come into outsource talent. And then you have a bunch of division twos that do a great job you know, and then you have all the other division twos that are outsourcing talent. And then if you, you can clear that list to the division threes, you know, I mean, each, each program and in, in school um, has their own respective, you know, um, you know, marketing and, and sales strategy, but there, that, that's what makes Ohio different. So, you know, when we're talking with the kid of, of course, wrestling is a, a huge component of what we're talking about. And I think that's, why we're, we're, we're getting some of the kids that are committing to us and it, it's helping change, you know, the direction and movement. But at the same time, like we, we have to understand the, the market place, you know? And so we've been able to, you know, hop down to Georgia and get a two-time state champ. We've been able to, you know, move around the country. You know, we, we got a kid from Virginia to early decision to us that placed third, just went four and two at the super 32, probably in a position to win a Virginia state championship this year. We snagged him kid from Washington state, it, you know, potentially sign him within these next couple of weeks, um, you know, in a position to win a Washington state title, you know? So I, I think that, you know, it's, it, it, for us, at least, I'm not going to speak to the other schools. For us, it's going to be a lot of, you know, win the kids, win the win the Rowans, win the kids that you, you know, within the state that are identifying that type of education, that want that type of education and want that type of wrestling experience, um, you know, and then and then we're going to also have to, you know, do our, our legwork and get out to other places around. But, you know, so that's I guess what I would say about the competitiveness of the market and and what division three landscape is because yeah those guys do a great job but you know that it, it, we're talking about two different landscapes of, of college wrestling well then it's like crazy to me then you know it's like the northeast Ohio is like super stacked in d3 college wrestling like really really strong I mean uh, how many NCAA champions and finalists did Northeast Ohio and Cincinnati, right with Mount St. Joe. Mm -hmm. how, how many BW had a champ? Yep. John Carroll had a finalist. Yep. Right? Mount had a champ. Mount had a champ with a guy who you coached and recruited. Yep. It, it's just wild to think about Mount St. Joe. That, Mount St. Joe had a champ and beat him. Yep. And then then you got these outliers in these places like you go to Ohio Northern. They got an oh. incredible pharmacy school. Yep. It's well, out in the middle of nowhere, Ada, Ohio, and Northwest Ohio. Yeah. I went to one that really blew my mind. See, I've been to Wartburg. 
I, I wear yeah. an orange Wartburg shirt. They gave me a bunch of gear. <laughs> I was in Waverly, Iowa, and I went to Wartburg, and their facilities are unbelievable. Obviously, Mount Union's got great facilities. And then I've been to UW Whitewater, which has yep. pretty good, pretty good facilities. And that's who goes back and forth with uh, Mount Union for NCAA in, D3, in football. And the one that really threw me off was Wabash. Oh I yeah, the Wabash, and I'm like, what? What is going? And it's all boys, private school, and the facilities blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is unreal. And like oh, yeah. D3 just has so much to offer, and it's like. You just told me you were recruiting a guy out of Washington State, a guy yep. from Georgia, a guy from Virginia. You're recruiting coast to coast, but you're getting really solid Northeast Ohio guys who have strong wrestling pedigree. How much does it, how easy is it for you to go in there with Case Western Reserve, know they're a really good student, and know you got a shot at the guy? And you can compete against anyone, right? You can compete yeah. recruiting wise against anyone in the country, right? right. And that, what's that like knowing that you have? that going for you had to do a, a living room yeah well i think you know i think first and, and foremost i think just being genuine um and trying to identify what exactly that kid wants so that before we get into their living room that initial call is really important um you know it's really trying to identify right off the rip you know some of the things that are important to them their family you know what they're trying to look for in an educational experience what they're looking for and wrestling experience so that we can continue to, you know, tailor and, and work through that. But I mean, to have the education that we have, to have the experiences that we have, I mean, that's why we got Rowan is because of chemical engineering, right? So, you is, know, is that what that, is that what that dummy's going into? <laughs> yeah. Chemical so, engineering. You know, that's chemical so engineering you know? I just threw up in yep. my mouth a little bit. You said chemical <laughs> engineering. So, so you know, I mean, science is insane, man. Oh, it's, it's, I and mean, a level. What, I, I tell, I tell our team all the time, uh, they, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, they, they maybe make the assumption that our kids maybe are, are soft or maybe not as dedicated. Like it, it is the farthest thing from the truth. Uh, our guys, what they do in terms of academic rigor and then in partner, you know, partnering that with the training and then what they're committing, you know, wrestling wise, I, I tell them, you're, you guys are nuts. You guys are, are loony to do what you That's do. Insane. Um, and, and I, and I tell them, I respect the hell out of them. I, I try to make it pretty clear, you know, every day because, you know, you, you walk in and, and you kind of have this notion of what you think things are. And then you see it on a daily basis and you're like, wow, all right. You know, this, this is a whole different, you know, ball game, but you know, for, for Calvin, it was, it was chemical engineering, you know, his, his mom had, you know, ties to Luprazol, uh, which is a big, you know, um, they, they hire a lot of case students or, or bring in case students for co-ops. And then also, you know, we coming out of our last senior class, we, we just placed a couple chemical engineers. Um, so it, it was a really nice, smooth transition of, of getting Calvin connected with some of these so he could learn, his family could learn and see the progression of, of what that looks like um, academically. And, and then wrestling wise, we just him and I hit it off. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's one example of, of a few. But, you know, right now and I can't tell you the prospects, you know, name, but, you know, we got a, a big prospect out at Solon you know, this, this weekend at, from North Royalton, you know, a kid that's, you know, also looking at engineering, but he'd be mechanical, um, you know, another dummy, engineer, that guy, a dummy know, mechanical yeah, engineer, that yeah. guy should be ashamed of himself. <laughs> you know, I'm another, telling you what those guys are doing. That is bananas to, 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 here's the thing. They can go and they can be D3 all Americans. You can do that at Case Western Reserve. Whereas I think if you're going to, Gardner Webb, George Mason, Kent State, Buffalo, and you're trying to balance those types of things with a D1 th D1 wrestling schedule. I think it's almost like I think that's an almost an impossible ask. Can't do it. Can't do you it. Can't do it. Purdue guys, the Purdue yeah. any Purdue athlete that's ever gone into engineering, they, they cannot balance it. It is not like right. a thing that li literally. I think the amount of Purdue student athletes who've done any type of engineering is like. It's, it is it's got to be a impossible. very tiny, itty bitty list of people, and they're, they're borderline superhuman with how smart they got to be, and to be able to balance the 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 rigor of both of of the athletic um, and the academics of that. But like, I am a little disappointed in the Rowan brothers, Calvin and Kyle, <laughs> that they don't want to be a high school 
math teacher like Dave. So I'm going to just say that out loud. <laughs> Dave's math, isn't he? He's math. I'm pretty sure he's math. <laughs> I think Dave's math. Well, he's a high school teacher. I, I'm a high school teacher. I'm, yeah. I'm very disappointed in both Rowan's going to Kansas <laughs> and then going to Stanford and not wanting to follow in their dad's footsteps to be a high school teacher. So shame on the Rowan brothers. I'm going to say that right now. I hope they hear this. But um, that's a great family, though, and a great example to show really how you guys are able to recruit somebody who's got division one pedigree as far as dad being a division one all American in Edinburgh brothers at Stanford. And a lot of the times you don't get kids. Those kids look down their nose at D three, not him, but a lot of these kids in Ohio, like unlike how they do out in Nebraska, Iowa, and you said it, the market dictates it largely. Um, they're like afraid to try and, and go D three because Everybody's pounded with this D1, D1, I'm D1, I'm D1. I don't like that mentality. How do you feel about that mentality? This I'm D1, I'm D1, I'm D1. And and how how quickly it, for you, Coach Malavi, are you like, yeah, dude, the, the, he wants to be a D1 guy. He wants to be. How quickly do you stick with it before you're like, all right, I got to go on to the next guy? How long do you do yeah. you make that fight or that argument with him? I mean, we – uh, I'll be I'll be honest with you during the recruiting process I very rarely even talk about the other schools that they're looking at um I I try to just spend the majority of the time you know focusing on what we have to offer um the really the only times I'll bring up other institutions is when we get towards like the early decision and application time I'll ask them if if they're not using their ED with us I'll ask them if they're using their ED somewhere else I don't know um, what that is what's ED so so early early decision Got application it. so it's a contractual application which essentially means if they get into that school they're 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 committed like they're Got done it. so okay. so it's you know, and, and they, they don't have to tell me the school that they're EDing to if they choose to do that. But in terms of mentality, um, you know, of course, you know, see that all the time, um, you know, and, and in terms of my thought process on the mentality, I, I just try to get kids to and urge them to take a look at the level. I really wish our division three tournament, I'm on the NCAA champs committee. I really wish our division three tournament wasn't the same weekend as the Ohio state tournament or as, you know, some of the, you know, as the state series are closing out, because I, I think, you know, if kids came and saw the level, if they saw the championship, not only would they see the, the competition and the level of athlete that's there, but they would also have a chance to see, you know, the environment, which is extremely competitive. Um, you know, we, we had last year at the championship, our most parity that we've had in probably 30 years at the tournament and that semifinal round that, you know, was absolutely bonkers. The blood round, you know, the night before was, was through the roof. Um, and so there, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I, I think, you know, I think social media plays a big deal in it too. Um, you know, you, you see so much traffic in terms of what's driving, you know, engagement and what's driving, you know, kids. And uh, I, I think that social media plays a big role, you know, I, I mean, it's, you put that out there, Hey, I'm, I'm going to this school or I'm going to vision one and, and what's going to be the reaction and, and what's going to be, you know, the reaction to essentially my news post. Right. So I think that uh, that does play a role. I'm not saying it's, it's the only factor, um, but yeah, it's, you know, I think kids could certainly, you know, but one final thing is we, and not to make it just about the kids, like I think we've gotten as division three coaches and some of my peers, like we've gotten so much better at marketing ourselves too. Um, you know, so I, I think that, uh, you know, during some, like, I remember with Jamie, like my first two years going against BW, you know, they, they smacked us in year one from the box score in year two, it would look like they, they smacked this again, but it was a super competitive match. I mean, there was, there was probably, you know, 1500 people there, 2000 people there. Then year three, they come out to our place again. It's just absolutely packed, you know, with, with people. And, and uh, you know, we, there was just so much that went into trying to get people there um, and get people around it. And I had people coming up to me after the duel and saying like how great I think it was fun to see that and, and I remember you know 
after I finished, um, after I finished, you know, year three, I remember Jamie like coming at, coming up to me and being like, yeah, that was like, that was fun. Like that was awesome. And that really stood out to me because, um, you know, he, in that moment, he could have been like, Hey, we lost, you know, this is, you know, like, I'm not, he, he just really, to me, that was a a big step, um, in, in teaching me as a young coach, how to, how to go about, you know, dealing with, with tough situations, but from the marketing standpoint, it was through the roof. Um, so, and I, I think lots of other programs have done a great job too. So you market, like you're saying, you guys marketed those matches with Baldwin Wallace. They got good teams. You got good teams. Um, like you said, social media, it's nice. You can guerrilla market. You don't need TV anymore. TV's not like on anybody's blip really. And you don't even invest anything into t- to TV anymore. That's like, I, I, I'm glad that wrestling figured out that we don't necessarily need TV. D3 wrestling is like, yeah, we don't need TV. You can stream it. Everybody can do it right here. This is all you need. And I'm glad that we've gotten past that because I know that there was a big movement. Martin Floriani, um, I interviewed, uh, I want to say it was like Greg Alinsky. Greg Alinsky had this big movement to have wrestling on TV. Martin Floriani's like, that's that's a horrible model. And I interviewed the guy. (laughs) Martin Florian is like, I want this interview on Flow Wrestling. I want, I don't want the yeah. TV for wrestling guy. I had my, he was really competing <laughs> with him. Why would I want that? Guy? And, I, and I got it, but he's right. He was right. But the bit, like you're saying, when you got to consider markets, the Big Ten Network just does a, a smash up fabulous job. And it is like Shane Sparks is awesome. Um, uh, Gibbons is awesome. Yep. They're, yep. they're just like really, really good all the announcers that they get and then it's like i just sit in front of my fire and hang yeah. out with kids and beat them up and watch that and it's like high level yep i'm not i'm not so, doing anything i'm not being bothered right i'm glad yeah. you guys figured out your niche and i'm glad that you're not trying to be right. something that you're not and that, i think that's awesome and then you're putting butts right. in the seats and that that and drawing interest and creating interest well, and there's yeah. a pause about the program well with the with what you said with uh the big 10 i think I think too, and and I, I watch I watch as much as I can. You know, not only Big Ten, you know what they put on television, but then ACC, ACC does done, fabulous. Has, yep, they do a great, fantastic job. But but I think too, what's been interesting. I don't know if you've noticed with the amount of wrestling that you watch, how the Big Ten because of the RPI system, it seems like they're dropping their match counts, and yeah. so you know they're they're really shifting everything to where you know it's they're controlling opportunity to even compete against the big 10 and john smith just recently you know put out you know i think a statement like it's you know basically big 10 schools aren't scheduling them anymore scheduling oklahoma state why would they why Why would they you know we can we can qualify with the way that the rpi system works you know we can have a couple schools throw in cliff keen a couple you know iowa can go hit you know, the black Knight, and, you know, and go hit a couple, you know, schools on the East coast and they could all kind of carve up different parts of the country to get the crossover. But why would we, we don't, we don't need it. And so, um, you know, we're, it's, it's very interesting to see the strategy and now how they're now leveraging television, you know, and, and leveraging that, but then also how it partners with the qualification process, um, so there's, there's a lot of, of that to get, you know, I, I don't know if gamesmanship is the right word, but there's a lot of that. So here's the wildest thing for me to, to like another point. Why would D one teams wrestle you guys or D two teams or NAI or Juco? It can only be bad for them. I don't like that. I think that's yeah. really horrendously bad. Talk to coach Andersy about it. Talk to Haywald about it. I think that's terrible. I think that's terrible that now we're putting them, we're saying to them, you got to wrestle one of these other 76 other teams or whatever it is right now, 75, whatever. You only got to, it only counts when you wrestle these other 75 guys or 77 guys that are in the pool of, and you got backups, you got opens, and I get that. But it does them no good. It's like detrimental to them to wrestle you guys. Ohio State, the Russell yep. guys, Kent State, the Russell, Cleveland State, the Russell guys. It doesn't it's, even it's, exist. It's, it's all. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Can we agree yeah. on that? Right. I, Super it's frustrating, man. Super frustrating. And Andersy says to me, at some point, 
It's about getting confidence for your guys, getting matches under your belt. It's not always about the RPI and just and getting the match numbers. He's like, those will come with other things, Clarion. They'll come with Clarion. They'll come with uh, Michigan State. They'll come with uh, Abby open. State. Your, your open is a big D1, a lot of D1s. Yeah. But then some guys are like, wow, we don't want to run into Case Western guys. We don't want to yeah. run into John Carroll guys. There's yeah. guys that think that I'm telling you. Oh, well, I mean, they, what happens uh, if they hurt one of our guys, right? Yeah, or That's I mean, I I had I had a coach when I was at Mount Union. I had a Division One coach call me. Um, he he's a he was uh, that that program was in the MAC at the time. They're in the Big Twelve now. But I had a I had a Division One coach call That's me. It's not hard for me to figure out. Just so and, you know. And uh, yeah, and uh, they, they called me and they were like, hey, uh, you know, we were sending, we're flying a guy out to your open because at the time I think he needed to get the eight matches. I think the rule was like what eight matches blows, to, the, the yeah, to, be, was, yeah. to be rankable. And essentially he was trying to get me to say that I would make sure that he only wrestled that D1 guys. He only wrestled division one guys. So, you know, and uh, you know, and, and my response, of course, like has to be like, I, I can't do that. You know, that's going to be up to K you know, and the people that are running the tournament, but it's, it, it took me definitely by surprise. Hey, this is coach such and such. Um, you know, this is, we, we need you to essentially. We were like, sure. dude, I don't even run the thing. I don't, I don't even run fucking run. Yeah. You want me to go in and like, <laughs> You want me to yeah. pat, hack in and like, what do you want me to yeah. do? We pay so, up that run it. What are you talking? About? It's like, so it's it, it like stuff like that's wild. Um, it's it you is, know. And it's, but it's counterproductive. At the end of the day, that's counterproductive. It's not good. <laughs> not good for the growth of the sport of wrestling. I'm sorry. And here's the other thing I found out with a lot of the D1 guys. The D1 guys are just like so. Freaking competitive. They're just so they they will do whatever it takes to get is if they it, man, we need all ten guys at the national tournament because that's what they all want, right? They need all as many scorers yep. as we can get there. Yeah. I'm just like, guys, you gotta step back and, and think about other things that are going into the sport and the growth of it. <laughs> it's almost right. like you're you want your ten guys at the NCAA tournament and you'll make SOCON schools and MAC schools are sacrificial lamb because you want 10 guys because we know that it's ranked different. We know that it gets ranked. We know that we know who's drawing the water. You're not, we're not dumb, right? Right, right. We, I mean, you know, you saw how the, you see how the coaches ranking go in the RPI. It's just like, come oh, on, guys, yeah. come on. Almost. You got it. You got to think about other people. And I think yeah. John Smith does a really good job of considering other people. Yeah. Um, he'll have the, he'll go and wrestle in Italy with NC State and, out at the well, ballpark and all these other things. Yeah. He gets the like promotion end of it. And John Smith will talk to anyone. That's the other crazy thing about John Smith. Yeah. Dude, that guy don't know me from a load of soap. Yeah. Always respectful <laughs> for me, respectful yeah. to me, answers all my questions. And um remembers when I saw him at the World Cup in like 1989 or 88, he lost <laughs> and him and his brother were MFing each other. Yeah. And he stayed around and he like uh he signed all of our hats and signed yeah. all of our and he lost. It was like a uh, dude from like Belarus or was was one of the Eastern, uh, right, Eastern countries. Block. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember he signed an Ohio State Buckeye hat and he's like, <laughs> wrong OSU, he said to me. And I was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, but you signed it. Yeah. yeah but yeah. like that guy really gets it. Whereas a lot of the yeah. other guys are just so. Well, he's he's on the rules committee. And so he gets he gets his shots in, too. Um, so he's on the, the rules committee. Um, and that he, he actually, from what I learned, um, uh, this past year on my first cycle with the NCA is that he, he, have you ever noticed in, in swimming or in, and I, and I never really thought about the freestyle folk style thought process this way. And, and maybe it's, it's just me being a dummy, but he he's somebody that really cemented, like we are not transitioning to freestyle in, in, it, and it's not because he doesn't have an appreciation or love for freestyle, but he loves how folk style creates opportunities for kids in the U S. Um, and so that, that was something that, you know, was, was brought up, you know, when I was, you know, working with, with the committee out there. And, and so, you know, he, he's, uh, he's tactically 
Um, and, of, and of course, you know, the competitor he is and the coach that he is, it's, you know, it's easy to, I guess, assume that, but um, he is tactically uh, very smart, you know, in, in his approach and how he goes about things, how he uses words um, outside of being pissed, you know, but <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> you know. I, listen, I have seen it all firsthand, all the levels I've seen him as a competitor. Yeah. I've seen him as a coach. <laughs> I've seen him as a brother. I've seen him at all these different, like, ways I've seen the guy and since I was a little kid, right? Like I remember right. going to Savage Hall in Toledo and watching the World Cup and like I saw him and, and the Schultz brothers lose in the same day. Oh shit. Savage yeah. Hall. Dude, it was wild. It was wild to see those guys <laughs> lose and it's such a high level and the teams are came in. Oh, is it is, is it is it is it bedtime yet? It's getting close, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well we can we can wrap up here, coach. Um in closing, what what do you think you want people to know about, you know, what you've done at Case Western, what you did at Mount Union, what you did at Fireland? Dude, you coached at a high school in freaking North Carolina. Where was that Pine Bluff or something? Uh, it was it was it was actually with Chris Von Druska at Union Pines. Okay. Um, so so uh, when when Haywald when Haywald took the position um, to go to Case Western. Um, during that transition, I was actually, you know, when Bill was taking over, I was offered the assistant position at Mount, but it was just an intern position that paid, I don't know, it was like 8,000 bucks, you know, something like that. That's what you'd be making for the year. And my, my wife and I, we had our first child. And so it was, there was no leeway, you know, really for that. So what with Chris Vondruska, his dad, Don, and, and his brother, DJ, were two of my high school coaches at Lutheran West. Um, and so went to coaching school, essentially, with Chris uh, down at Union Pines, um, had a fifth place finish, you know, there with them and, and then uh, in the state and then ended up coming uh, to Firelands. And my first day at Firelands had zero kids at open mats, um, you know, had zero kids show up and took that program from, you know, dead last in our conference, the PAC conference. I think we scored like 17 and a half points. And then in the next year, we took second with 117 and then won it for the first time in 19 or 20 years um, in year three, then went to Mount Union and, you know, helped rebuild that program, you know, started off, finished with one qualifier or first year, one qualifier, 46th in the country year two, jumped to 10th, the national champ, two all Americans, um, two in the national semis. And then year three, fifth with three in the national finals four all Americans and another champ. And, and I really felt like, you know, and I think the whole world felt this with, with what happened with COVID, but man, you know, had we had a chance to, you know, wrestle that national tournament, uh, that next year, um, in, in the COVID year, um, I, I really think we, we would have been a trophy team and really had a shot to compete for the whole thing with Massey and, and with Grant Martin and some of the guys that, you know, we were bringing back Isaiah Watson, Kirksey, Connor Homan, um, you know, Seth Hayes. I mean, we, we were putting together that, that team of, of really eight to 10 guys that I felt like, you know, all right, you know, th this is a team that, that could really do the whole thing. Um, or at least, you know, we'd be in that discussion um, and, you know, making the jump over to case saw, saw another opportunity to build and, and saw another opportunity to, you know, help change, you know, direction of the program. And, and so, you know, right. You know, when I took over, we had 12 kids on the team right now, we're at about 24, 25 kids on the team. Um, and so um, hoping to put together another recruiting class of about eight kids or so and, and get the roster size to, you know, right around 30, 32 kids and, and, uh, or 33 and, and, uh, see what, see what we can do. Um, you know, but yeah, that's, that's essentially what the journey has been like, you know, these past couple of years. Dude, does your wife move all around with you? Is your wife oh, a yeah. kid? She's your the, wife, she's your wife's best. a road warrior. Your yeah. wife is the best. <laughs> she takes care of your kids. She yeah. moves all around. She's awesome. She's the best. It, it sounds like another move's coming soon. Hopefully it's up by us. Yeah. Do you have anything else for me before it is bedtime at the Malave house? No, no, I, I appreciate it. This is actually my, you know, my first time, uh, you know, being able to talk with you. And so, you know, it was, it was really, you know, exciting for my end, because like I told you at the beginning, um, you know, when I, when I was growing up and coming through, you know, the wrestling ranks, when you wanted to see matches and you wanted to, 
it was Zeb's voice and, you know, it was your content. Um, and so I really appreciate it and what you guys do to promote all divisions and, and helping bringing division three to the forefront. And, uh, you know, so respect the heck out of you, um, respect you guys and appreciate all that you do for us. Coach, thank you for the time. Where are you guys going to be next? Uh, so we're at RIT on Saturday. So we leave tomorrow to head out to Rochester and compete in their invite. Um, you know, and so that we actually close the, the semester with RIT and shut it down for finals. Um, you know, we, and it's, it's crazy to even think that we're there, but we're, we're you know, basically shutting down for first semester. Uh, we'll still practice and things like that and, and train, but we'll move competition off the books and then we will sprint into January and have six weeks of, of competition. And, and then we host the NCAA regional at case for the first time um, in school history this year. So we're bringing all of, you know, so we talked about, you know, giving Ohio an opportunity to, you know, see division three wrestling. And, you know, I feel like we can offer that. Um, so it, it might overlap with sectionals a little bit, um, but we were actually bringing uh, 20, well, including us, we're bringing 20 teams to Case Western um, for the qualification process. <laughs> I love this. Here, here they this are. is so awesome. All right. Hey, be yeah. dad. I'm going to stop this. Thank you for the time. Stick around. All right. Okay.